this video is going to go through uh, a follow-up to the high-level pattern, the HLP. It's going to talk more about coil uh, in, with the lower body and the rear hip. How do you do it? How do you test it? Um, and how, you know, how does this apply into my swing? Okay. Uh, before I start going into coil, um, I'm compelled to mention hip hinge. Okay. And just so you see, hip hinge. Hip hinge is simply tilting my pelvis out this way. Hip extension is my glutes just straighten me out. Hip hinge, hip extension. So once we start to apply coil and we want to do the HLP and swing and, and do all these things, just keep in mind you have to have hip hinge. Okay? You can start tall, but you have to get hinged before you can swing. And I'll challenge you to go back through all of the best hitters, look at them, they all get hip hinged. Even if they start straight, they will be here before they launch their swing. So anyway, that's just I just want to tell you that because as I do this coil stuff, you'll notice I'm going to often be vertical when I'm doing this. Sometimes I'll hinge if I'm thinking about it, but the early part of learning how to coil, you can learn to do it vertically, okay? But ultimately, we want to tilt our pelvis and learn to do that. Okay. So with that uh, hip hinge again, or hip hinge with coil. If you don't coil, uh, you're going to have limited success trying to launch an high level pattern. Okay. And coil is that process where you see the belly button kind of turn back towards the catcher <clears throat> before the batter starts to swing. There's a lot of ways to do coil wrong. Um, there's one way to do it right, so that's what I'm going to go through. Okay, uh, Coil in general is just the process of rotating my hip over top of my straight femur. Okay, So my, my femur is here. Uh, if I drove a nail into my femur and had it pointing straight out, I need to keep that nail that's in the bone pointed straight into the camera. Okay, When I do that, I'm going to hit pinch. I could talk about the nails pointing here. And I'm just going to rotate my pelvis and my whole upper body over top. Now, you have to be careful. Um, watch for kids who get real bendy at their waist and turn way back like that. That's not coil. That's not what we're doing. Um, coil is just taking the slack out of your hip. Leg has to keep stay straight. Take the slap out, slack out of your hip. I'm done. Max coil. And what that means is I can't turn my hip back anymore. All the slop is out. Okay? So just keep that in mind. When you're doing coil, it's just taking the slop out of the rear hip. That's it. Okay? <coughs> it's not a shoulders move. Okay? It's not a waist move. Okay? When you get here, if you start to turn with your shoulders, if you're a bendy person like I am, you can bend back really far trying to get coiled. It's not right. When I do that now, I'm all twisted at my waist. That twist is gonna be slop in my swing. It's not gonna work right. You need to fuse your upper torso. So for kids who are bendy, um, what I mean by that is some people are just tightly wound and they can just turn like this and their core is still tight and they're all together. Some kids are gonna turn like this and they're gonna be like Gumby in the middle. Okay, for them, we need to firm up our core and then coil, okay? Firming up your core happens a couple ways. Uh, first way is just tighten up here, okay? Obliques, all that, you know, just kind of lock it in so that you move as an assembly. The other thing that sometimes helps, uh, often helps, is uh, stick your butt out, you know, by flexing your lower back, okay? So when you do that, you stick your butt out, and your lower back gets tight, and then you tighten your core. Now when you turn, it's all one assembly, okay? So if you have somebody who bends or gets slack right here, again, tighten up the core, stick their butt out, okay? It's really uncomfortable, but you do it, and you'll be tight. You'll be a tight assembly, and then you can pull back, and all you have is movement right there in your hip, okay? Taking that out. Um, Again, that movement in my hip, I'm trying to take that slop out for two reasons. Uh, what I talked about more in the first video is uh, the, pr 
primary reason is when I coil, I misalign the bone in my, my femur and my hip. Okay? And then when I straighten my hip, you'll notice my leg turns me in. It's like I'm home plates here, my pitcher's there, coil. If I straighten my hip by launching backwards, you notice my leg just drives me through the zone. Okay? That's because when I coil, I created a misalignment in my hip joint. Okay? That misalignment prevents me from extending my hip. I can't extend my hip and keep the joint misaligned. So as I try to straighten my hip out right here, my rear hip, it's trying to fix that twisting in my joint. Okay? So it's a beautiful thing. So when it works right, you get here, you're hinged, you coil, and then when you launch rearward, your glutes will fire. Again, the most powerful body or muscle in your body. They fire to straighten your hip. Bam! That's what drives you into the hitting zone. Okay? It's spectacular. We all want hips in the swing. Okay? That's the right way for hips to be in the swing. So here, coiled, launch rearward, and it'll bring you through. Okay? So let me get into a little bit more depth on coil uh, if it's not working for you. Uh, maybe before I move on to the depth, let me just show you a quick coil test, okay? So here you are. Um, you think that you're coiling. You don't really know if you're coiling. Sometimes it's really hard to tell. Um, a quick way to test coil is to get here, you weight your rear leg, coil, and if you're coiled, so I, I got to keep holding back. I'm actively coiling right now. Okay? I'm just out of range of movement, but my muscles are still active. All I'm going to do is lift up my front foot. If I'm coiled, I will uncoil. Okay? I'm not going to do anything different. I'm just pulling back in my hip. I'm going to lift up my front foot. See how I uncoil? Okay? <clears throat> you have to watch a little bit with, with new people or kids because it's easy. Kids will fake stuff all the time because they're just trying to do what they see. It's not their fault, but you have to watch a little bit. So if you get a kid who's like this and they're coiled and they think they're coiled and then they lift up their foot, nothing happens, and then they're awkward, and then they do this, yeah, that's not, <laughs> it didn't work right, they just turned, okay? So the way this works is you get here, coil back, keep coiling back actively, and just lift this foot up and you'll uncoil. So that's how you know if you're coiling your hip joint. Um, I'm gonna go into this in some more detail. Um, I wanna explain a little bit more uh, about when you coil right, where do you feel it, okay? So when I coil wrong, okay, I get here and I coil, you see how my foot starts to roll over right here. You see my big toe lifting off the ground. You see me rolling over the back part of my foot. So I'll do that again. So you see that? I'm rolling over the back side. Nothing going on here. Um, you're coiled. You can be coiled and do that. But it's, it's not exactly what we want in your swing, okay? It's breaking down your posture. Part of that is because your stack, your joints are all stacked up. Your ankle, on knee, on hip, all in a line, okay? So once you get to this type of posture where it's ankle, knee, hip on the inside, and start to coil, uh, you'll notice it'll get a little bit different. When you're coiling right, what you're gonna feel is your big toe digging into the ground, okay? So if I have a good posture here, where again, my hip is inside my knee, my knee is inside my ankle, and I coil back, now I'm digging in more with my big toe, okay? So it will fix itself a lot of times, but if you, if you have someone who's got a vertical stance or a kid's not getting it, <clears throat> they keep rolling over their foot, there's another way to help fix this, and it, it can actually really bring more into uh, deep in your coil, and that's to actively resist or fight the coil with your rear leg, okay? What I mean by that is, as I start to coil and pull back, it's that motion, you know, once I run out of motion and I keep pulling back, 
uh, it's trying to turn my knee out, okay? So what I want to do, and let me explain it with the nail uh, item that I talked about. If I had a nail sticking out here, and I keep my leg straight, I coil, if I tug it, if I bounce it, you see the nail's going to want to turn. My femur's going to want to roll out, okay? When it rolls out, it's going to put that pressure out here on the outer part of my foot. So what I want to do is I want to resist with my leg. I want my leg to fight this way, to turn inward. So I'm going to pull back here, and then I'm going to just fight this way with my rear leg, okay? When you do that, I'm going to put this somewhere where it's not going to fall because it's really loud. When I do that, it's like you're building towards them like this, just like you would grab a wet rag and wring out the water. That's what I'm doing with my hip joint when I do it both ways. I'm going to pull back with my hip, fight it in with my leg. So now I'm doing this. I'm wringing out the, the slack, okay? And that's going to build a lot of tension in your hip when you do it that way. You'll see I'm pulling back so hard my foot wants to spin out. Because even with tennis shoes, I still don't quite have as much traction. So if you see somebody doing this in their socks on a wood floor, and they say they're coiling, not happening. Here, pulling back, I'm turning in, and I'm lift this leg up, and it will bring me around. Now it's not like a violent snapping move, because that's really just uh, the muscles in your hip just kind of unwinding without... Uh, being stimulated, right, without flexing or doing something. <clears throat> so that's kind of a little bit more on coil. Um, one other thing before we get to it, uh, before we go to some of the other ways to explore this, <coughs> rear foot position, okay? If you watch a lot of pros, uh, you watch a lot of the best hitters in the world, you won't see a lot of rear feet that point outwards, okay? Just start watching a lot of video. I'm not saying there's not somebody who does it. I can tell you there are not many. I don't think I've seen anybody hitting the pattern with their toe out like that. Again, maybe you can do it. Here's part of the reason why, okay? If I stand here, toes out, I can see the pitcher quite well. No problem, I could be here, see the pitcher. But what I contend is, for me to hit in the pattern, I need to coil my rear hip, okay? Well, I've already turned my foot out. So to get fully coiled in my hip, I'm gonna have to go back pretty far, okay? So if I'm here, to fully coil my hip, I gotta first get back to neutral with my pelvis, and then I gotta coil. Well, now I can't see the picture so well. Again, I'll start it right here. I'm gonna start out normal first. Okay, and this is with feet straight. Okay, it's not in or out, it's not pigeon toed. Fully coiled, that's it. Okay, if I toe out, that's a lot, it's kind of awkward. Now I'm coiled. Okay, toed out. You got to go really far to get coiled. All right, so keep that in mind. That foot position. I want you to be straight, or if you're somebody with a lot of range of motion in your hip, so you still kind of lose the picture a little bit when you coil, turn it in. Okay, a lot of pros do this. Lots and lots of college women softball players have to do that because they have a lot of a lot of range of motion in their hip. Pull holes, turn it in like that. A lot of people do that. Some can go even further. Okay, it's fine. So all you need to do is just make sure you're getting all the slack out of your hip when you go, okay? You do it from neutral spine, you just gotta go back a little bit further. The more you tow it in, the less you gotta turn in, okay? Bring it in here, and I'm coiled right now, and I'm still almost open, but it will execute right. So that's generally how that looks. Okay, ended up having to cut the video right there. Um, so I'm back. Um, I was gonna show a little example of um, what's going on with the ground when you're trying to coil. So again, when you're doing this coiling move, it requires traction into the ground to coil. 
So I pull back and it's actually will try to push your foot out if you're doing it right. So if you stand on something, a slick surface, and you try to coil, the paper will move out. You need traction to be able to do this. So if you try to coil, it's going to turn out. Now I'm not doing... Sorry, I don't have any information about that. Now I'm not turning my foot in and out, okay? I'm doing all the work right here. I'm trying to pull back, and it turns my foot away, okay? So if you're able to do this and get like this, uh, you're not coiled, okay? If you're here and you get like that, if you lift up your foot, nothing will happen. So it's just something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, you have to have some force into the ground when you pull back with your back hip, you get tight. So it's just something I've seen done to try to explore it a little bit. But if you're not sure, you know, you can play with this. If you got a kid who you think they're coiling, you just put a piece of paper and, and they're doing this, well they're not coiling. Okay? Because there's no force going on the ground or it would turn out. Try to coil, it's going to start to spin out every time. Okay. So I think that's all that I have on coiling. Um, hopefully that explains the process a little bit better. I think I'm going to make one more video right now to just try to Put the two things together and hopefully that will <clears throat> bring everything together for you guys so if you have any questions go ahead and comment uh, get a hold of me and i'll i'll try to help out where i can so anyway that's it